So anyway, let's talk about this NXT 2.0, because i got to tell you guys about this show. Did you watch it? You should have. This show is is material every single week. (laughs) At least it opened and closed with good stuff. First, we just had a very simple Braun Breaker promo, which was funny because he's had 24 matches in his career. Significantly less than I had when I did that match with Jack Evans, I might add. And uh, he's won the title in the fans' chant. You deserve it. You deserve that belt after 24 matches, buddy. He ignored them. He did acknowledge that his father, who he did not mention by name, had been there last week, and he was very excited about that. And then he essentially issued an open challenge, and, and that was that. Santos Escobar beat Zion Quinn in the match where Electra Lopez was going to leave with the winner, allegedly. So the uh, referee was distracted. Electra and uh, Zion Quinn start, uh, you know, uh, what that term you used? Porkin'. And then she kicks him in the balls, and then he gets beaten. Bonin. So, uh, yeah, he, she's uh, she's not leaving with him. Slow build, I'm sure, to them finally getting together. Uh, we had about 45 Mandy Rose. You know, if you're a fan of Mandy Rose in a bikini, <laughs> apparently there's no such thing as Instagram. You actually have to watch the show on the USA Network on Tuesday nights at uh, 9 o'clock. Dude, their average audience for this show is 78 years old. Of course oh, they don't have Instagram. it's 78. It's 62. Doesn't oh, she have guy, a, oh, doesn't yeah, she have Instagram a Facebook? is big amongst the 62-year-olds. Does she have a Facebook where she's in a bikini? But anyway, they had a bunch of bikini videos of Manny Rose. <laughs> we had Cameron Grimes. This was classic. Cameron Grimes beats Damon Kemp. Who's Damon Kemp, you ask? You guys know who Damon Kemp is? Anybody? No. No? No. You don't know who Damon Kemp is? No. No. Oh. Well, you see, he's the brother of... Um, uh, what's his name? The Olympian. That guy? Uh, Gable? Gable Stevenson. He's the brother. <laughs> he is the brother of Olympic wrestling star Gable Stevenson. Okay? But they call him Damon Kemp. Okay? <laughs> Not once do they mention that he is Gable Stevenson's brother. But they do say, you know, he comes out of, uh, I think they said Michigan, uh, you know, the, the Minnesota, the home of, uh, you know, Brock Lesnar, Shelton Benjamin, and uh, great Gable Stevenson. But they don't say, he's his brother! So he gets no. defeated by Cameron Grimes. Because, I mean, you know, what's the point of having the brother of Gable Stevenson? Let's give him a new name and not acknowledge it. Imagine back in the day, you know, they had Kurt Angle, they brought in Eric Angle, and they just called him, you know, even though he looked exactly Kurt like Kurt Franklin. Angle. Kurt Franklin. That's, yeah, like Sam McMurray or, no, he, he, you know, No, it's even Frank worse, Gaines. dude. It's even worse. Like, well, I guess they may not change Gable Stevenson's name. They haven't yet. But, uh... They can't. Well, they can. They, they can't. Can. They, they absolutely can. They Chad Gable! Why are we in this sakes. position where you're the one defending NXT and thinking WWE is going to make smart decisions? Don't put what that happened voodoo here? on me. I am not defending this at all. None of it. Then we had Malik Blade and Edris Anofe versus Joe Gacy and Harland in a Dusty Rhodes classic qualifier. Okay. And uh, for weeks, Joe Gacy and, and Harland have been talking about how they want to enter and win the Dusty Classic. So the match is literally, they destroy these two guys. But then Harland continues to destroy them, and he gets disqualified. So Edris Anofe and Malik Blade qualify for the Dusty Classic by being absolute, complete losers. The other two are out of the tournament, and they respond by Joe Gacy smiling and doing the thing he does like this, and Harlan just doesn't sell anything. Well, you're talking about getting these people ready for Raw and SmackDown. That's how you get a title shot. You lose your way into it. Then we had Tony D'Angelo and Pete Dunne in a crowbar and a pole match. This is, like, so funny. I can't even keep a straight face. Oh, So it's a crowbar on a pole match, okay? The rules are you have to climb a pole and get a crowbar, and then you can, like, attack the other guy with it. But you don't win if you get the crowbar. So if you get the crowbar, but then the other guy gets it from you, now he can beat you. So it's like, why is the crowbar even on the pole? What's the point? So match starts, and, you know, thankfully Pete Dunn's in it, and he's really good. And uh, Tony D'Angelo is not nearly as good as Braun Breaker, but given he's had, like, four matches, I mean, he's actually pretty good for four matches. Granted, he's in there with Pete Dunn. So they're doing this match, and they go to commercial, and they come back, and there's, like, 
plunder everywhere outside the ring. There's a table. There's a trash can. And I'm like, wow, what a violent match this is turning into. But then, but then, they come back from commercial. There's, you know, garbage, shiznit all over the floor. And then the announcers go, they can't use that. What? They'll be DQ'd. What? Because it's a crowbar on the pole match. You can only use the crowbar. I'm like, God help me. So then, they're doing this match. Who's that Russo, the guy that got hired? Is that a typo? Johnny I'm sure this Russo. wasn't Vince Russo. <laughs> so here's this match that Russo has booked. So then, uh, D'Angelo gets the crowbar, okay? And I swear to God, it's the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. Every time one of these two idiots has the crowbar... They're completely incompetent. <laughs> so first, you know, uh, whatever, Tony D'Angelo gets the crowbar, but of course he misses, and then he misses, and he gets booted in the gut and he drops the crowbar. So then Pete gets the crowbar, and then he misses, and he hits the pole, and then he gets booted. I'm like, you two idiots, quit grabbing that crowbar. You're totally impotent when you grab that crowbar. So they just do this match, and then finally... The chair that they can't use ends up in the ring. And then uh, D'Angelo gives Pete something, and Pete hits the chair accidentally, so it's not a DQ. And then he gets crowbarred and pinned. I'm like, my God in heaven. It's it's 2000 World Championship Wrestling all over again. Then we had, uh, this is another one. It's Indy Hartwell, Persia Parada, and Wendy Chu, I'll get to her, against Casey Catanzaro, Kane Carter, and Amari Miller. I don't know how many matches Amari Miller has had. But if you watch her work, God bless her, I'm sure she's a sweet, beautiful woman. It looks like she's had three, okay? So, of course, you know, it's not about her trying to have a wrestling match. Instead, she's doing all these dives, practically landing on her face, almost killing herself. So it builds to the big spot where Wendy Chu gets the hot tag. Let me tell you about Wendy Chu. Wendy Chu was the lady that played the thousand-year-old lady. Remember that lady? She was a thousand years old and her Mei hair was dead. Mei Ling Yeah, Mei Ying. She was like Meng. Remember? Mei Ying. <laughs> Because she used a tongue. I'm not making this up. She used a tongue and death grip like Meng, and she was Mei Ying. It's 2000 WCW. What did I tell you? So anyway, they decide, well, this gimmick ain't going to work. Who ever heard of a thousand-year-old woman? This is ridiculous. Well, she needs a new gimmick. Well, her new gimmick is that she wears pajamas, and she's always sleeping in the back. They'll be doing some segment, and all of a sudden the camera pans over, and there's a lady sleeping. She's got the iPad on. <laughs> She's laying there sleeping. Okay? That's Wendy Chu. Okay? Narcoleptic. So, you guys don't, maybe I don't know if you know this or not, but you guys know what the gimmick was with the thousand-year-old woman. You guys know what the gimmick was? She I'm going to help you out. Good. You're not going to believe me, but this is not true. Not get Zia Lee okay? over. That's this what that was. This is true. This is true. Do you guys remember, some of you will, the the Revenge of the Sith, the third Star Wars movie of the of the uh of the the first anyway, you know what that is, right? No, I don't. He was that Dom? Prequels. Yes, the prequels. Episode three. I'm out of these. Okay. So in episode three, all right, there is a scene where Yoda, you know who Yoda is, right? You know what Yoda and the thousand-year-old woman have in common? Well, they're What's both that? thousand years old. Ah. So he's an old, little, green, decrepit guy, and he's always really ah, like this and everyone, everything. Like that. And so he's going to have a fight with one of the bad guys. Who was the bad guy he was fighting, Dom? What was that guy's name? Count Dooku. Yeah. Who's not the guy that wrestles in New Japan. <laughs> That's another bloke. So anyway, it's Yoda versus Count Dooku, okay? So Yoda hobbles in with his cane, and then he goes like this, and his lightsaber jumps into his hand, and he starts doing all these flips, and he's flying around, and he's doing all this craziness, and they do this wild, crazy CGI battle, and then finally, you know, uh, Dooku escapes in his spaceship or whatever, and then Yoda turns off his lightsaber, and he goes, 
And he gets his cane. He's like, eh, because, you know, he's 900 years old. Right? So in the movie theater, like 20 years ago, Yoda starts flipping around with his lightsaber. Everybody pops. Okay. So somebody in 2020 is like, I got a great idea. So that, I'm not even making this up. That was the gimmick of the thousand-year-old woman. She's supposed to be a thousand years old, and she was always old and decrepit, but they were going to build, and she would do a match, and she'd be flipping and flying and doing all these high spots, and then she'd get old again. I swear to God. So anyway, they figured, well, this gimmick sucks. I got a better idea. Well, now she walks around in her pajamas, and she's always sleeping, and she gets in the ring for the six man, and she comes out. I swear to God, she comes down in, uh, she's in a sleeping bag. I'm not making this up. She's in a sleeping bag with a pillow. So she puts her pillow. This is worse than Orange Cassidy. You guys were mad at Orange Cassidy because he put a hand in his pocket. He didn't bring out a sleeping bag. <laughs> she's got a sleeping bag in the corner of the ring and a pillow, and she's sleeping. She's sleeping. So then finally, somebody gives her the hot tag, and you never guess what happens. What's that? Hits the ring, and she's running wild. And she's doing cartwheels, handsprings in the corner, and she's flying around. She looks awesome. She's by far the best worker in the match by, like, 10. And then, uh, you know, she makes her big comeback, and then, you know, she goes to sleep again. But that's the Wendy Chu character. She literally works in her pajamas with the footies. Feety pajamas? Yes! Damn. The zipper in the front? I don't yeah. even remember who won after all that I just ran, rambled about. See, you went on that whole thing about Yoda and everything. Really, this girl is basically a mix between Orange Cassidy and that weird girl from the quad that would just be out in the open all the time in that sleeping bag, just, you know, in college and whatnot. So then we had Solo Sokoa and Boa, which, like, when I first heard the two names, I was like, aren't they the same guy? But actually, they're different guys. Boa is the the friend of the thousand-year-old woman who doesn't exist anymore, and he has magic that he can't control. And then Solo Sokoa is the guy that they chant, the Uso chant to. So I'm watching this match, and I'm like, oh, they ain't beating either of these guys. I just knew immediately. And so they did a double count out. That was a waste of time. We had a Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams promo. They just totally got rid of the Cruiserweight title. It's gone. You know. And then finally, the main event is AJ Styles and Grayson Waller. And AJ is good, and the match was was good. And then, uh, you know, AJ beats him clean, of course, because these developmental geeks <laughs> can't get them over. So he beats the guy, and then he goes, you're good, but not good enough. I got a friend I want you to meet, and it's, uh, it's L.A. Knight, who attacks Grayson Waller. And that was it. Two-on-one advantage baby faces beating up the heel. It's going to meld in nicely with Raw and SmackDown. It really is. <laughs> that, that, that was NXT 2.0. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts? This match was, was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What well, I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Housen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh, also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.